Welcome back to my channel. So fall is uh, sneaking in, it's sneaking in. We're in the first week of September and um, while I really like fall, I'm just really not ready for the rain here where I live. And uh, I just wanna hold on to summer as much as I can. And um, yeah, fall, it's just really, it's not even sneaking in, it's just like coming, like it's running. So today I'm gonna be doing this look here. Just a simple plan with makeup, transitioning into fall, end of summer kind of look. I'm incorporating neutrals, but still keeping it kind of warm and autumnal. See, here's the thing with me. I wear summer and fall colors all year long. So my transition, if anything, it's just incorporating more like nudie beige neutrals and more taupes that eventually like I start wearing more like cool topes. You know what I mean? Like I, I I literally wear the same type of makeup all year round. Like nothing changes all that much. But so this is like as drastic as it gets. So I just wanted to do a little uh, get ready with me using nothing new and doing a little end of summer makeup toot, if you will, old school style. And uh, let's just get into it because I literally cannot do this intro. I can't do it. It's like I forgot how to talk today. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna jump in because um, I'm feeling a little rusty. I'm just gonna prime with my Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm almost out of this one. This is in the shade three. And then I get to open my big one, my brand new big one in the shade two which is my favorite shade. And my skin is back to being kind of busted. So uh, we're gonna stick some green color corrector on here too. I'm testing out a new primer, so I just wanna use things I already know work really well for me. So that if some of the makeup doesn't look good, I'll know what the culprit is. And as you can see, I'm losing some of my summer tan, which is always a bummer, but you know. I was actually really, really good about, I actually didn't get a lot of sun exposure this year, like given like the past couple years with traveling um, where I did get a lot of sun exposure. This year I was really, really good about it. And I was really, really good about always wearing an SPF when outside. So I do feel like this is like the first summer where I'm not super freckly, you know? And like, I've been really aware of like the sun damage on my chest and so shoulders and stuff from like growing up never wearing sunscreen. So it's like, you it's like you hit 30 and you start to see everything that <laughs> you did to yourself um, in your youth kind of come up on your skin. Even that. Like, just using those two products, like, my skin looks so much, like, more even and, you know. I guess I should be using a mirror. One time somebody said, you use the viewfinder too much and it's disconcerting. Top five favorite comments I've ever got. I'm gonna do some underpainting here. And take my Sculptino. I don't know if I said the shades that I was using in the last thing. I was using the Givenchy Prism Libre color, correct, the green one. And this is the Tower 28 Sculptino in the shade Getty. You don't film for a week and then you forget how to do everything. <laughs> for concealer, I'm gonna go in with my Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 3W and just there I am using the viewfinder again. Uh, and just conceal some spots here. I'm actually almost out of this. I'm kind of really trying to get all the product out. So when it comes to complexion, when summer starts to, like late summer into fall, I don't really change anything to be completely honest, like nothing in my complexion routine changes. Like I still do like a dewy light base. I still spot conceal versus using foundation all over. 
like nothing changes. I think the only thing that changes is maybe my skincare. Um, I start using more like masky or like heavier moisturizers, but other than that, nothing changes. I'm really hoping that this moisturizer agrees with my skin that I used. Um, I used the Chanel Sublimage L'Extrant de Cream, something like that. Um, and it was just a little sample that I got. When I ordered the fall collection weeks ago. And um, it it's making my skin look really nice. But what I will say, the fragrance, oh my god, it smelled like I took like a bouquet of flowers and just like mushed it on my face. Very strong. Okay, from what I can tell, that is all blended in. We're not gonna do too much. Nothing new has been going on with me. Nothing really to report. I've just been kind of focusing my time on my website and getting stuff like kind of polished and ready because this is the kind of, this is the time of year where I start applying to art residencies again. And I like to really polish up like documentation of my work and my website and just making sure that anything that I had been working on slash, I don't know, like anything mid project or anything like that, like gets finished so I can actually submit it and be able to talk about it. That's just what I've been doing this past week. So for eyes, when it starts to become more autumnal, fall vibey outside, you know, fall vibey, when it's fall, I like to gravitate more towards my taupes. And one of my favorite warm taupes is the Eyes to Mesmerize by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Oyster Pearl. It's this really gorgeous, warm toned taupe that has a very like wet looking sheen to it. And I think this is such a really beautiful one and done or an eyeshadow base. And so that's what I'm gonna use it for today. Um, so I'm just gonna tap this onto my eyes here. So I'm just gonna blend this out. Just kind of take it up the whole way. So in the winter time, a lot of times I just stop here. Like I just let it be the one and done that it is. But since it's like end of summer going into fall makeup, I'm gonna take my Tom Ford Tiger Eyes palette. And this is in the like cream powder formula, um, which is my favorite thing ever. Um, and so I'm gonna take this kind of taupey shade here. I'm just kind of run it on top for like an extra shine. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of the peachy and run that right kind of in the center. Something I've noticed with the Tiger Eye palette, it kind of hard pans, but it's really, really easy. Man, I keep getting out of focus. Um, it's really, really easy to get it to not be hard panned anymore. Like it's that soft that you can really, you know, it doesn't kind of cake together um, like some other shadows do that hard pan. Okay, and now taking, oh geez. Now taking the lightest shade here and the smaller brush. I'm just taking that into the inner corner and kind of bringing it up into the crease to define. And I'm thinking I want to do something a little more, I don't want to say like sultry, but just a little more dramatic than my usual. I'm going to take the dark brown, which is my favorite matte brown eyeshadow ever. It's so creamy. It's so good. And I'm just going to take that in the corner here just to define. I barely ever do structured looks, so feel grateful that you're witnessing this because it's very rare. 
and take it down underneath. This brown is so pigmented, so I'm being like ultra careful. I also find that in fall, it's kind of like the time to take like your normal look and kind of elevate it a little bit for funsies. Obviously this isn't like an everyday look for me, but when I think of autumnal, for me especially, as a person who wears like warm tones all year long, this is like what I think of. Like I think of like a little bit more of a dramatic eye and then, you know, incorporating cool tones with my neutrals or warm tones with my neutrals. And I'm just gonna clean that up again with the same concealer brush. And to complete the eyes, I'm gonna go in with my little mini Dior show. Oh, it's so cute. And the wand is so comically big. <laughs> it's so funny. But I think this is a really good mascara. Highly recommend. Am considering getting it in the full size someday. I will say that this is not very, um, I know this comes in a, a, a waterproof version, but I will say that this is um, not very like water resistant um, and does smudge on me a little bit. Like I got caught in like a, a light rain one day when I was wearing this and it definitely was like, cause my eyelashes are so long, it was sitting right here from my blinking. Um, so it's not very like water resistant, but it is really beautiful. So before I go in with my blushes, I'm gonna go in with my highlighter. I haven't used this in a while and I used it the other day and I was like, oh, I need to start picking this up a lot more. This is the Rose Ink, what's the official name of it? Uh, this is the Rose Ink Cream Highlighter in the shade Prismatic. It's so beautiful. It's such a gorgeous, like, gold, like neutral gold, I would say. A little bit of champagne in there. So it's right here. And I like to wear this on my eyes too. And it's one of those really funky highlighters where under artificial lighting, it isn't really much to write home about. And the texture of it is so unique. Like it's like this like grainy powdery kind of thing. When I, I think of cream, I think of something like really soft and emollient. But this, even though it's soft, it's not that emollient. And it kind of looks pretty opaque when swatched on the finger and when swatched on the back of my hand. But when tapped into the skin, it just really presses in, like it becomes one with the skin. And so when the light hits it, that's when it's just like activated. Like it isn't something that's just gonna steal the show in a way, it just like slightly takes your skin to a more elevated place. It's very natural, very subtle. So when the sunlight hits it, you can see with artificial light, my ring light, it took the glow that I already had and just kind of amplified it a little bit. But if the sun was on it, oh my God, it's not shimmery, it's not anything like that. But it just, it's just really, really lovely. And I'm actually gonna take this and the corner here because I just I love it on my eyes like I think this is a really beautiful like very quick shadow as well I really like to wear this with my bronzer on my lid and then this topped like in the center for like an on-the-go easy kind of look but yeah that's that and I definitely need to use it more because I really really like it next we're going in with an oldie but a goodie this is the Laura Mercier blush infusion blush color infusion, excuse me, in the shade Fresco. It's this beautiful, neutral, kind of nudie brown, but up against like a terracotta or anything. I swatched this next to the new Chanel blush and a couple of other kind of terracotta leaning blushes. And this looks significantly more cool, but I would say on its own, it's a very neutral 
beigey nudie pink, which is my favorite color to wear in autumn. So like I've said multiple times on my channel, I wear terracotta blushes, cream or powder all year long. Like it's just my favorite of all time. But my second favorite is a nudie beigey pinky brown. And I feel like Fresco like perfectly embodies that. So I do use my creams like quite a bit, like all year long, but in the cooler months, I do use powders so much more. Um, so the swatch versus on my cheek, very neutral, pairs with anything. It's so funny, like if I take a week off of filming, any type of video it's like I forget how to do it and I don't know how to talk so um this next part took me a long time to get to this point um so I like to layer my blushes and um I had never done it before but then like when Patrick Ta came out with his blush duos where he said to put the powder on before the cream I was very intrigued, so I started to implement that into my routine, and I've been really enjoying the results. I'm gonna go in with this very beautiful pinky, nudie, beigey brown cream blush, and this is by Violette FR. This is the Bisu blush. It's the matte cream blush at the bottom here. It has a brush, which I have never used because it's so pristine and beautiful. And I know I'll probably not like it, so I'm not gonna waste my time. This is in the shade Louise. Very cute packaging. This is the lid. And it has like almost like um, an orangey floral, like orangey floral. <laughs> this has like an orange floral smell, not sweet. It's definitely floral, like heavily perfumed. Um, and it's also like this very swirly design here. So I'm just gonna take that onto a brush and dab that over top of fresco and my highlighter and kind of sandwich everything together so here's fresco and here's louise louise has a little bit more pink but not too much so it does provide a little bit more of like a pinky nude where fresco provided a little bit more of the brown both are neutral both are lovely they don't overpower the look. They allow the eyes to be the star of the show. Do a little close up of the skin here. So as you see, it's very neutral on the cheeks, um, which allows the eyes to be kind of the star of the show, which is what I prefer in the fall. So if I had done like a terracotta blush, it would have worked with this as well. But it, since I'm doing more of a neutral blush, it allows the more like autumnal look of the eyes to shine. Yeah. Mm. For lips, I'm going in with my NYX lip pencil in the shade Nude Beige because it's like this, it's this nice neutral kind of brownie nude that doesn't really overpower. So those are the lips finished. I prep my lips with the Glossier Bomb.com and I'm, I'm just don't wanna touch them. I think I just wanna leave like a nice neutral, natural kind of look um, as the cooler months start to roll in um, and this eye look starts to become more of like a cooler taupe leaning eye look. Um, I would maybe go in with a brown or a berry, um, but that's more of like a winter time look. But as we are at the end of summer, this is where I would keep it. Okay, so that's the finished look of end of summer transitioning into fall makeup using nothing new. Um, I hope I wasn't too much of a snooze fest. Uh, I really need to finish my coffee. And thank you so much for being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh huh. And also let me know if you want me to start posting on like Instagram and TikTok because I've been really neglectful of those accounts. Truly, I truly have been, and I apologize if that's what brought you here. 
it's just too, sometimes it's too much to manage. I don't know, I'm one lady. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.